everybody. So with season five of Team Wolf almost over, we were just given one of the most amazing episodes, I think, of the season. Let's talk about episode 18, Made of Javadan. The episode starts off on the night of a full moon back in 1760. We see a bunch of soldiers and there's a war going on and we don't understand what all's going on exactly, but we do know that there is a beast about and people are getting killed. So this is the first time we see the first incarnation of this beast and I just cannot even stress enough how awesome the flashback scenes were. After a bunch of soldiers take on the beast and a lot of them get dead, we see a letter left signed by a man named Sebastian and it is left for his sister. And the actress who is playing the sister is Crystal Reed. No, you guys, she's not back as Allison Argent. She is playing Marie Jean. She did such an amazing job, and I cannot applaud her enough for it. Now, I'm going to get back to Marie Jean and the whole flashback sequence, but first, let's talk about what went on with all of the pack throughout the episode. Scott, in this episode, the first time we see him, we see him taking on the beast, and it's just like a, a quick flash of him fighting the beast in the school. Then in another scene, we see him saving a student from the beast. They hide in a classroom, and then the beast pulls Scott literally through a door. The door goes away with him, but it's just like, boom, crash through the door, pulls him, and I, I don't know how Scott lasted as long as he did against the beast. Another thing we see is Scott taking on the beast again in the library. He gets a bunch of students to go hide upstairs. He transforms in the library and um, I'm thinking that they probably saw him transform so I think the wolf's out of the bag. See what I did there? Yeah, yeah, I went there. But anyways, he's basically losing this whole fight and then Liam, Malia, and Brayden show up in arms and take on this beast and the beast flees but yeah it's um yeah scott uh, it's safe to say scott even as a true alpha cannot win in a fight against this beast so when the pack ask scott why he fought the beast for so long and all of that his reasoning was that he was trying to get the scent of the beast and he got it and they track that beast scent, and guess who is the beast? I am so sad that this is true, but I kind of called it like an episode back because of the weird interaction between Corey and Mason, but yeah, Mason's the beast. I don't know, it's sad, I hope he doesn't die because he is such a comic relief and I enjoy all of the scenes with him. Now, I know I haven't really mentioned Styles, but it really wasn't a Styles heavy episode, sadly, but it was still a great episode. One of the funniest scenes I think with Styles was when him and Hayden bring Liam into the school all injured and they're trying to figure out how to get him to heal. <laughs> And Styles tells Hayden that she can take some of Liam's pain away. So instead of just like grabbing him to absorb some of his pain, she kisses him. And it works. But it's just the expression on Styles' face when she did this was was priceless. I need to screen cap it or something because it's just that good. The expression on his face, it's that good. So after Hayden has taken away some of Liam's pain, Styles has the smart remark that next time he'll kiss Liam. Styles isn't going to kiss Liam, it, it, I, it, but the fact that he made that comment was... We are getting back old school Styles, you guys. Finally, Styles, his sense of humor is finally resurfacing and it's what I've been hoping for for so long and yes, thank you MTV and everybody. As far as Malia goes in this episode, we don't see a whole lot of her but when we do see her, we see her running through the school looking for Styles and then calling Brayden to bring all her guns to the school. Alright, 
So now it's time to get back to the flashback. This actually involves Lydia as well because during the retelling of Marie Jean's story, the Argents are trying to convince Lydia that she can somehow stop the beast herself. I don't see how that is even a possibility, but there must be something about Lydia as a banshee that has not been revealed yet. Parrish took off after he was told about Marie Jean and just didn't really care to know much about this story. So Lydia gets told all of the details of the Argent's origins and it is everything that I had hoped for and just such a wonderful thing that we were able to see it on screen. First off, about Marie Jean, she is a skeptic when the flashbacks start up and for a while she does not believe in La Bette, the Beast and it takes a bit of convincing and seeing the beast firsthand for her to actually believe in the beast. When she finally sees the beast, it is such an amazing scene. We see this guy, Henri, come save her. He throws mountain ash to create a barrier between them and the beast. I don't know if Henri was a druid or if he was just a hunter as well or what, but I think the fact that he had all of those ingredients, the mountain ash, the mistletoe, all of that in his place kind of points towards him having been a druid. So when Marie Jean goes to hunt this beast and can't kill it, Henri starts to help her figure out how to spot the beast in human form so she can kill it and all of this. And it's really sad when we find out who the beast is because it has been her brother Sebastian the whole time. Her brother is not remorseful in the slightest and he became a beast just like Miss Little Crazy Face in Hemlock Grove. He drank from a werewolf paw print and became a werewolf himself. But not just a regular werewolf, a crazy, psychotic, huge beast of a werewolf. At the end of the flashback when we see Marie Jean kill Sebastian by impalement, she explains to him what she did to make it possible for her to kill him. And one of the ways that she prepared the spear, I couldn't catch exactly what she said, but what I did understand was that it was no ordinary steel. It was wolfsbane and mountain ash forged with some kind of blood under the light of a full moon. I, I don't know, it, whatever, I mean, whatever works. I still don't understand what made him such a massive beast of a werewolf, but hopefully they explain that later on. After she kills him, she returns to her village and they burn every remnant of Sebastian's memory from existence. And then we find out a really incredible fact. Henri is an Argent and when Marie Jean marries him, she becomes an Argent and then we know where this story goes. That is the beginning of the big Argent Hunter family line. One thing I want to touch on, Parrish before he left told Lydia that he isn't just a harbinger of death, he is the cause of it. I feel really bad for Parrish and all the ideas he had of who he was and how everything that he thought he knew about himself has been shattered. I feel so horrible for him, but hopefully he will be back very soon and will not be so down in the dumps anymore. All in all, I thought this was an amazing episode. It took the show to a completely different level and I cannot wait to see what the last two episodes of the season have in store for us. I hope y'all enjoyed this recap and review. Continue to comment, like, and subscribe and I will talk to y'all later. Bye guys.